and a half. Hey, here's here's a great here's a, here's a, here's a fun. Uh, this is pretty fun. Here is um. Here's a uh, uh, this is this is fun stuff. Um, here is uh, Fox News talking about how the real American uh, Barry Weiss was bullied out of the New York Times. There's a lot of um, a lot of uh, you know uh, strum and drung about this. Is that the strung? What a uh, Barry Weiss, uh, very. I don't know. Can you say mediocre writer? I mean, she was a mediocre writer who um, I don't think that, you know, she wasn't uh, a conservative in the way that Ross Dathau uh, is. Who you mean remains. openly? Uh, well, here's the thing. Like, Ross Dathau is a like, good so writer. Like, Ross Dathau that I right. learned from. Right. I mean, I, I Ross right. Dathau is very worth engaging in. Uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of times some of the stuff he says is lunacy, particularly when it comes to like uh, women. And I'm not talking about uh, agreeing with him. I'm but, actually, right, I'm just exactly. drawing a basic distinction on intellectual engagement. Exactly. Um, but, um, but uh, let's uh, listen to what Fox News has to say about it. Let's talk about what happened under the New York Times yesterday. You know about this political correctness. It was originally rolled out to rein in conservatives, to rein in people that wouldn't get in lockstep with liberal causes. And now, just like the Me Too movement, they're beginning to shoot their own. Al Franken paid the price when the Me Too movement boomeranged on him. That's an example, but there are many others. And what about what's happening in Hollywood? And more important, what's, look what's happening at no, the New York for Times. One second. Believe for it or one not. Second. Pause for one second. This is the way that they will structure this, right? The idea that the Me Too movement is basically a fiction that is designed only to ensnare conservatives. Because that's the only way you can say that it boomeranged on them with Al Franken. It didn't boomerang. Al Franken got caught up in it. But it wasn't a question of a boomerang because it wasn't aimed at conservatives. The, the whole movement, to a large extent, was kicked off by basically holding to an account a major Democratic donor. Harvey Weinstein, major Democratic donor. So go back. I mean, this is, this is the way that they have to rephrase, reframe every uh, cultural movement as being a partisan thing as opposed to a cultural divide of between people who think that hey um women have been historically they continue to be subjected to um a form of uh, oppression that should stop <laughs> and for them it's just about partisan politics but go ahead conservatives are reining people that wouldn't get in lockstep with liberal causes and now just like the me too movement they're beginning to shoot their own al franken paid the price when the me too movement boomeranged on him that's an example but there are many others and what about what's happening in hollywood and more important what's look what's happening at the new york times believe it or not even a moderate to liberal cannot exist at the New York Times because of this new generation of radical leftists that will not hear a contrasting or a nuanced difference opinion. Case in point, Barry Weiss. She says the New York Times is not for her and they are not, and the New York Times is not for her and she is not for the New York Times. She resigned yesterday in a long detailed letter. She wrote this. Uh, about 2016 in particular, though the lessons of 2016 ought to have followed the election. Lessons about the importance of understanding other Americans, the necessity of resist resisting tribalism, and the centrality of the free exchange of ideas to a democratic society have not been learned. Instead, a new consensus has emerged in the press, but perhaps especially at this paper. The truth isn't a process of collective discovery, but an orthodoxy always known to an enlightened few whose job is to inform everyone else. So you can have, you can hire, you can have a differing opinion in the newsroom or actually in print, or else you are bullied and harassed. And he went on to even get worse. And what's getting worse is they, New York Times, believe it or not, almost from top to bottom is afraid of Twitter. Yeah, uh, and uh, yes, indeed. You're welcome, guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, it's just it's just absurd. 
you, you have to completely ignore the the just the recent history. She didn't lose her job. She self-expelled or whatever it was. Colin Kaepernick, on the other hand, lost his job. And I just want to say, like, even I'm somebody that I'm like, I'm on the Taibi side of a lot of these arguments, but I just think it's like particularly extraordinary with her that she doesn't even feel a, a need to say as part of this self-dramatization, I've rethought trying to get professors fired <laughs> for speaking about the Middle East. I mean, this is the original example of this stuff, actually. Yeah. That's people so lost jobs. People, uh, Norman uh, Finkelstein was economically terrorized, of which I, I don't believe in, period. I mean, this guy, like, seri- I mean, you could read profiles of him that is basically like, you know, there's a little bit of work, um, lost the teaching job I was great at, and, you know, basically inherited like a modest house and was able to cobble together a few things, which is why he was able to subsist. And that was all simply for saying like literal realities about Israel. So, you know, I, yeah, I mean, I, I find the, that she doesn't even feel like, let me at least ask cover with that is just. Well, and part of it was also a, a, a function of, of, of her inability to concede uh, anything like, you know, right. they, they, they cited, um, you know, remember what she, there was some uh, uh, skater figure skater and uh, whose last name I think was, she had a last uh, a Japanese last name and she uh, won some thing. I can't remember what the details are. I remember what happened in time and right. she tweeted out, you know, an amazing, she landed a triple axle, you know, whatever it is. Uh, immigrants are getting it done or something like that. And it was a, it's a quote, or maybe she misquoted uh, Hamilton and people pointed out, um, she should have been, she's not an immigrant. <laughs> she's not an immigrant. She just has a Japanese sounding last name. She's not an immigrant. Right. And instead of saying my bad, that was a wrong assumption for me to have. She said, I, I know that I was just making a, an, a point or something. And it's like, okay, when you're complaining about the flexibility of people's right. minds, that's right. The ability to be open and have a, a nuanced conversation. And you can't even admit in that instance, like you made a mistake, but instead you have to say, no, you people are wrong because I was just sort of extrapolating because, um, I guess the theory is like, well, uh, you know, her parents were immigrants or somebody else was immigrants and they produce people. What? That's absurd because you would have to say that with every single person short of Native Americans right. who achieve anything and you would never do that. Right. And so it was basically just like your instinct is. I assume that they're not American. OK, fine. Live and learn. Stop making that assumption. Stop being so intellectually lazy. Be a little more conscious of what you're tweeting out. But instead, what you do is you use your authority as a New York Times columnist as a way of saying, no, you're wrong. And she didn't like the fact that people mocked her on their internal slack over it. And it's like, you know what? I mean, these people don't walk the walk. Right. They, right. they deploy the talk when it suits them. And I think the only- walk is really important. And I, and that's what I'm, you know, across the board going to, going to defend, but I agree with you completely. And a major reason that some really important things across the board have been, have been so undermined is because of the blindness and cynicism of somebody like Barry Weiss. Absolutely. Um, 